In this video, I want to provide an introduction to a short course on scalable data visualization using the Grammar of Graphics approach. So what is Grammar of Graphics? It's effectively a single framework for data visualization that easily generalizes to larger sets of variables with potentially complex hierarchies between them. So it's a framework that can be used to produce a huge variety of graphics, which are particularly useful when you're looking at rich data sets. For me, the most important thing about the approach is that it allows you to create visualizations and create lots of different ones and choose between them in a very quick manner. And so it's very agile in the way in which it allows you to explore data. In the lectures and in the course, we're going to be using the Grammar of Graphics approach, which has been put forward in the ggplot2 package in R. Um, but it's also relevant for Python because you can access most of the functionality uh, for the ggplot2 package using the plot9 Python package. So it's applicable across both of the languages. Importantly, this course is not a comprehensive introduction to ggplot2. There's an excellent freely available online book, which is written by Hadley Wickham and others that I've got a link to in the course materials on the GitHub page. And I'd very much recommend anyone interested to have a look at that book. So what is this course then? Well, effectively, it's my personal view on why grammar of graphics approaches are so useful and why they dominate traditional approaches to plotting data for most moderately complex data sets. And as I said, it's not meant to be a comprehensive introduction to the topic. It's meant to effectively whet the appetite of people so that they then choose to go and look uh, for themselves on how they can use these approaches. So why have I actually put this course together? Well, effectively, it's based around a few reasons I think that uh, people don't use ggplot2. So in my experience, uh, that's partly because some people just lack exposure to this package. Uh, it's also because at least when starting out, people typically find the syntax pretty confusing, uh, at least I did when I was starting out. And some people just say, well, it's overly complex for doing quite a simple thing. Um, also, I think that people don't tend to see the benefits over traditional approaches to plotting. And finally, I think a really important one is that people that work with data analysts or researchers, they're typically pretty busy. And so having to spend the time to indoctrinate yourself to this sort of approach to, to graphics, it takes time and people often see that as being something that they can't afford. And so in this course, I'm hoping to sort of break down some of these barriers here. In terms of the course structure, there are a series of short lectures and then there is a problem set which has answers in R and Python and they're both available on the GitHub link uh, as well as the problem set itself. The data that we're going to use to exemplify the Grammar of Graphics approach is a data set that I found on Kaggle. Again, the link is on the GitHub page and it concerns uh, country level suicide rates from 1985 to 2016. And so obviously this is a very sensitive and important topic. And I think it's a really nice example of how the Grammar of Graphics approach to plotting can actually allow us to elucidate patterns that would just be very hard to find using traditional approaches, or at least would take a lot longer to find in, in that approach. And just to talk about this data in a little bit of detail, and obviously one of the columns here is country, and here uh, I've just selected the first, I think, 100 rows of the data set, so it's actually only for Bahrain, but there are a range of countries here. We've got the year in which uh, the data was recorded. We've got an age group that that pertains to. We've got the sex of the group that's been considered. Uh, as I say, we've got the count of suicides and the size of that particular uh, group's population. So we can already see that this data set is relatively structured. So we've got lots of different groups and, and groups within them. So this is the type of data set where the grammar of graphics approach really sort of comes into its own. 